Good evening, everybody. Welcome to Dial R Swedish Tactics. In this video, we're going to go over Conquest 10, 11, and 12. Specifically, starting off and Sector 1. Welcome, everybody. Hello, hello, hello. So, brand new Conquest is upon us. Uh, if you're watching this in Conquest 13, 14, 15, you've gone too far. Please search for those videos. You're in the future. All right. So, let's go right into it because this is going to be a little bit of a longer video. So first off, I want to show you guys what the new uh, packages, what are they called? The uh, Conquest Pass, right? Battle Pass. So right here, what you're looking at, on the bottom is the normal rewards you would get for completing Conquest if you didn't buy anything, right? So on the bottom here is the rewards you normally get, right? Key cards, mod slicing gear, etc, etc, etc. Up top, this is the path or the this if you buy the cheap pass or the basic pass you'll get these extra words listed up top so it's not that great but what's notable is you're gonna get 30 shards of maul if you make it all the way to the end and you're gonna get 20 shards of dad bod boba so now what this allows you to do is if you are short maul normally you would buy the 20 shards of dad bod boba along the way with conquest currency but if you buy the basic conquest pass, you're going to get those 20 shards basically given to you while you're moving along through conquest. But you're also going to get 30 shards of maul. So you can take that currency that you would normally use to buy dad bod bulba shards and you can buy maul shards. What this does is that effectively with the red crate reward and buying maul shards, if you are short on maul shards, you can get 80 maul shards over the course of conquest, buying his shards, the red crate, and the basic battle pass. All right, sounds confusing. Okay, so basically, or if you already have Maul, it just allows you to use that currency that you would normally spend on Dad Bob Boba and spend it anywhere because you can't get him any quicker. You're still gonna have to do three conquests, either red crate, etc., to get Dad Bob Boba. Anyway, you can't unlock him, unlock him any quicker. If you want to upgrade and get the expensive pass, I'll show you what it looks like for me. I'm in Canada, so keep in mind it's 27 bucks for me. You're going to get 33% Conquest Energy re Regeneration, so faster Conquest Energy Regeneration, and 25% extra Stamina Regeneration on your characters. You're going to get this nice fancy uh, purple key card, which isn't too bad, but it's a 4 dot. I don't really like 4 dot. You're going to get some, some uh, med kits, some stamina kits, and you're going to get some tech, and you're going to get some Kairos. In my opinion, I'm not going to buy the big pass. I'm going to stick with the basic pass. Gives me some extra rewards and some extra shards. All right. So now that's out of the way. You guys just let your conscience be your guide. Pick whatever you want. Spend accordingly. If you want to just blast through here in five days, then go ahead. Buy the big one and be done with it. Now, the other thing that has changed that you have to be aware of when you are making your way through each sector. So right here, you'll see on the screen, are each sector... And you can see that there's certain paths marked in gold. So now if you follow the gold path, you'll get the options to pick from different key cards. If you do not, if you deviate from the gold path, you will not get the options of which key card node to land on. You will only get one. So keep that in mind. Uh, if you want this graphic, I will post it on my Discord server. The link is below. So that has also changed. So there are more nodes. It's not any longer where you can go into the middle and then choose. If you do not pick the right path, you do not get the option of choosing which data card node you land on. You are forced into one. All right, so keep that in mind. All right, now let's get into this. So Conquest 10, 11, and 12. Let's look at the global feats first because the global feats have been vastly reduced. All Now there's only one page. So you have to keep these feats in mind specifically um, this one right here, the defeat tw at least 500 enemies, you're going to get that passively on your way through. As you see, I'm already over a fifth of the way. Uh, like my father before me, defeat enemies with Boba Fett and Jango Fett. Again, you're going to get that one passively as you're going through. So you don't really have to worry about that one as much. As you see, in one day, I got 13. And now this one, Fate of the Wretched. So win 20 battles with Boba Fett and Fennec in your squad. Doesn't mean they have to be bounty, fun bounty hunters. It has, doesn't have to be a whole bounty hunter team. Although there is this feat right here. Win 40 battles with a full squad of bounty hunters. 
But keep in mind also right here, Bounty and Hunter. So Bounty and Hunter. Very clever play on words. Win 20 battles with Boba Fett and Han Solo. Now, you can combine Bounty and Hunter and Fate of the Wretched. You can put Boba, Fennec, and Han on a team under a Galactic Legend. And you can bang out both of these in, if you do it twice a day, in 10 days. Right? 10 battles. Uh, win 40 battles with a full squad of smugglers. So keep in mind, that's like that Kira squad you used in the last in Conquest uh, 7, 8, and 9. Although you have to do it 40 times, which means starting today, you're going to want to do about three of those battles every day. So keep that in mind, because these global feats are a little bit more important when you're planning out your daily routine going through Conquest. So let's briefly go over the feats needed in Sector 1. So the, the Sector 1 feats are a clone army. Defeat 50 enemies with clone troopers. Right? So basically you're just going to have to do 10 battles. Kill everyone on, on the opposite side. Or maybe there'll be a Geo node. You can kill 6, right? Or 7, depending on how many, how long you stretch it out. But it can be 501st clones. It can be Bad Batch clones. Uh, I used Bad Batch clones with my Gear 11 Omega to get these. Uh, so just do one of those a day. If you get do one battle, five kills, ten days, done. You don't have to worry about it. So one of these a day you'll have to do in Sector 1. Clumsy, attempt to inflict invasion down 40 times. You can get that one very, very quickly using the old JML old Ben trick. We'll get to that when we look at squads. Unsupportive. Win 14 battles with no supports in your squad. Now, this one's very friendly because there's so many multiple teams you can use to get this as you're progressing through Sector 1. And then Relentless Fury. Gain Frenzy 20 times. This is another one. You don't really have to worry about it at first. Go through Conquest and check out the Java, or Java, Jawa scavenger nodes and look for that Frenzy tech. And use the exact same trick we used in Conquest 7, 8, and 9 in Sector 1 of Conquest 10, 11, and 12. So look for the tech to get this one. Don't waste your energy doing a bunch of bounty hunter uh, battles in Sector 1. Because you're going to need your bounty hunters throughout this entire event. Right? Now, they changed up the no or the, the mini boss feats. So there's always going to be a Bounty Hunter feat and then a non-Bounty Hunter feat. Only two. In Sector 1, win with Zam Wessel surviving. So you have to put Zam Wessel in your team and she has to survive. You do not have to have a full Bounty Hunter team. You can put her under Ray. You can put her under SLKR. You can put her behind a JML. And what? Because if you have her on a JML team, he's not going to be taunting. So keep that in mind. And then win without any Bounty Hunters in your team. So basically, keep... X bounty hunter alive and then use another team without any bounty hunters done so I recommend using the JML old Ben team here because you get 15 minutes you can kind of stretch it out a little bit longer get a little bit more uh, attempts at that evasion down from old Ben's basic and then the boss very very easy they've, they've pared down the feats quite extensively here so win with a full squad of separatist units I used GG so general grievous droids and Watt instead of droidica and then win without using any Jedi, Sith, or unaligned Force users users in your squad. So basically, no Jedi, no Sith, no Galactic Legends. Because Rey and SLKR are unaligned Force users. So uh, for every boss in this, it's going to be win without using a, a Galactic Legend, basically. And then for at least for Sector 1, win with Separatist. So very, very easy. It's only Relic 4. Uh, you shouldn't need a video, even though I have uh, a video of me blowing through it with GG. It was very, very easy. Just go in there and bang it out. So GG will get you both these feats. Now, let's go look at the squad loadouts for Sector 1. I recommend making loadouts for each sector. It'll just save you energy and time. So in Sector 1, this is the primary team. I got to use this once a day. This is what I'm using. Bad batch with a, with a gear 11, uh, five star or six star Omega. They're gonna get their five kills a day. I'm gonna bang that feed out in ten days. Now, this is what I was telling you about putting Boba, 
Fennec and Han Solo all under one team because that's going to bang out two feats at once. So you use this team twice a day. If you do it twice a day, you'll get done in 10 days those two feats on the global uh, the global feat list. And I recommend doing it in Sector 1 because Sector 1 is really easy. You shouldn't have any problem. Also, Smugglers. This is the team I used for Smugglers with my Gear 12 Kira. Uh, this is what the team I used to get the Smuggler feat in the last Conquest uh, Triset. Triset? I'm not sure that's a word. So I have to use this about three times a day. Now, Han Solo is going to be losing some stamina because you're going to have to use this team... You're going to have to put Han Solo with Boba, right? Now, and Fennec. So, Fennec obviously is not a smuggler. I think Boba might be. Let's see. He is not a smuggler. So, sorry. You can't get three feats in one by putting uh, the, them under the, the uh, smuggler team. So, Han Solo is going to be get down there in stamina because you're going to have to use him three times a day to bang out that feat if you're going for it. Uh, so I recommend doing this first, very first, then doing this one, uh, and then doing, say, mid midday, midway through the day after some stamina's refreshed, use this one again. And then at the end of the day, use Ray, this Ray team, again, and use Kira again. So you're going to want to use it three times a day, because obviously three times 14 is 42, and you need to, to win 40 times. So these two right here are going to go towards the global feat. Clones, you're going to have to use to get that feat for Sector 1. And now, this is when we get into non-supportive, or the win 14 battles without any supports in your squad. Now, this is kind of nice, because you can pull from everywhere to get this. So, CLS with Bistan. Bistan has a, has a Frenzy. You can kind of start towards that Frenzy feat. So, obviously, Attacker, Attacker, Attacker. Attacker, Attacker. No support. You can move towards the feat. And now let's move into the GLs. Lord Vader with an attacker, tank, tank, tank. Right? Tanks and attackers. You can get some unsupportive. And, the, and and carry on and carry on. So now this team, the JML, you have to have Old Ben in there because you're going to coin or special ability to Old Ben over and over and over and over again as much as you can. I like to bring in Jedi Knight Luke so I can get the stun off. Otherwise, all of these characters are passing to Old Ben. And, uh, unfortunately, no GMY, no Hoda, no shock T. Why? Because they are supports. Now you could bring in a healer, so like maybe bring in Barris instead of Jedi Knight Anakin because Jedi Knight Anakin is going to get a couple just hits off which will kill your opponent, your opponent a little bit quicker and really you want to be stalling passing everything to old Ben. So I would maybe recommend moving Anakin off and putting uh, Barris in there. But you can use this on the mini boss. I think it took me three battles until I, I got that 40 and then I was done. JMK, right? Attacker, 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 tank, no supports. So you can use all of these these uh, Galactic Legend teams as you're progressing through the zone to get you through the zone really, really quickly. SLKR, tank, attacker, attacker, tank, no supports. You can't have uh, Hux, you can't have First Order Officer, you can't have Phasma, those are all supports. C, attacker, tank, tank, attacker, right? You get the picture. And then, for the mini boss, you have to use Zam Wessel, and she has to survive. Now, I used her with the bounty hunters because you have to work towards that full bounty hunter feat, so you have to use bounty hunters. A full bounty hunter team 40 times um, for sector one I don't think you would really need to use Boba you could probably get away with like a, a Dengar I think Dengar no actually I think Dengar no Dengar I think is an attacker Cad Bane is a support don't use Cad Bane and then for the boss GG with droids and Watt very easily get you the two feats at once so this team for the final boss this team for the mini boss use the uh, Galactic Legends to progress through, make sure there's no supports on your team. Use this JML team in the middle with the mini boss to, to finish off that one. And then Lord Vader, no supports, no supports. And then you make sure, guys, very important, you're going to want to use this Kira team, the smuggler team, three times a day. One in the morning, one midday, one at the end of the day. And you're going to want to use this 
uh, Ray or pick your Galactic Legend of choice, SLKR, something. They don't have to live. You just have to use them in the same squad. So I'm going to use Ray because I like to use SLKR throughout, right? There is no kill 40 teams with dark side, kill 40 teams with light side, which is also very nice of them, right? So they're really paring down on the feats. But some of these are still a little bit grindy. So that's sector one, and that's also going to push you towards all of the global feats with these loadouts. If you guys want uh, screenshots of these loadouts, tag me in my Discord, and I'll also give them to you. What else? What else? What else? There was something else I was going to tell you, but I cannot recall. Sector two video coming out tomorrow. Stay tuned for that. Uh, no, 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 what else? Oh, yes, so keep on the lookout for that uh, Frenzy tech. So every time I came up against a Jawa, I would look, and I got one in Sector 1, which allowed me to get that Frenzy feat very quickly, because then I went back, did the JML fight with Frenzy, and I got my Frenzy feat as well. So that's it, guys. That is it. I hope this helps you immensely to get through Conquest Sector 1. This is a video for Conquests 10, 11, and 12. Stay tuned for Conquest, <laughs> my Conquest Sector 2 video, where I'll basically do the same thing. I'll show you what teams you can use to most effectively get through all of the feats with using the least energy and the, using the least time. All right? I hope that helped. The link for my Discord is below. I will pin that map in my Discord as well. You can get a hold of me down there. Otherwise, please like, please subscribe. Go Parker. And uh, I'll catch you in the next one, guys. Okay? Later. Bye-bye.